Mind's Eye Audio presents Thou Shalt Not Moccasin Adventures of the Storyteller My name's Drew and I'm the storyteller. There's a Native American proverb that says something about walking a mile in another man's moccasins. What it teaches us is that we shouldn't judge other people because we don't know their story. As much as I'd like to claim innocence in this area, I recently found out that I had a lot of work to do. This is a true story. Partially. One day I was driving home from work when I saw a homeless guy standing at the intersection. This guy was holding a sign asking for food or money, I think. To be honest, I didn't even read the sign. I was just sizing him up, wondering what the hell his problem was and how did he get such a bum deal from life. I chalked it up to laziness or a drug problem, and when the light turned green, I drove off and never gave the guy a second thought. When I arrived at home, I played my voice messages as I started opening up my mail. I was reading a letter from my bank that said something about them hoping to receive a government bailout, and I was just about to get a little worried when I was distracted by a voice on my voicemail saying that the plant where I worked was closing. I said to myself, hold on a minute, this has got to be a mistake. After playing the message three more times and making a handful of calls to the plant and to various co-workers, I finally had come to terms with the fact that I was now one of the millions of unemployed Americans. Then I remembered the letter from my bank, and after rereading it, I understood it to say that my bank was bankrupt. I don't know if I was more numb or stunned. What I did know was that I was suddenly very thirsty and I needed a beer. So I jumped in my car and headed to the local watering hole to drink and think. While I drank, I noticed something on the television about a severe weather alert, but the sound was turned down and I wasn't paying all that much attention anyway. After a few too many, I handed the bartender my debit card for my bill and he handed it back to me saying that it had been declined. I tried to explain to him that I didn't have any cash on me but I don't think he understood because he threatened to call the cops. I told him to give me a few minutes to go home and get the money. I promised to come right back. I don't think he believed me because halfway home, one of our city's finest pulled behind me and turned on the flashing lights. The officer asked me to stand outside while he took my license and got back into his car to run a check on my name. There was a terrible storm brewing now. It was raining buckets and I was afraid that the wind was going to blow me over. I was literally holding on to my car when I heard the emergency sirens begin to wail. It was the tornado siren alerting everyone to take cover, but it came just a little too late. The wind picked up speed and I was blown clear across the street and underneath a parked semi truck. From where I lay, I could see the police car lift up and get tossed away. It was becoming dark as pitch outside as the street lights went out one by one. The howling wind was deafening and I could hardly breathe. The combination of too much alcohol and not enough oxygen finally overcame me, causing me to pass out. When I awakened the next morning, I was standing in the middle of what looked like the site of a bomb blast. My car was gone, the street was gone, and most of the buildings were gone. In fact, much of the town was leveled. I began to cry for the terrible loss and for my good fortune at having been spared. In the weeks that followed, my life changed dramatically, to say the least. I was homeless, jobless, and penniless. I had no identification and no family and friends to turn to, and I had no car. I lived at various shelters and ate at soup kitchens. After about two months, I found myself in a very awkward situation. I was looking into the eyes of a man whom I had never seen before. This man was sitting in his comfortably air-conditioned car waiting on the traffic light to change. I'm not exactly sure if the man was looking at me or if he was looking at the sign that I held. I guess I'll never know for sure, but what I do know is that curious expression that was on his face as he seemed to size me up. I wonder if he was asking himself, What the hell my problem was, and how did I get such a bum deal from life? Then my alarm clock rang and woke me up from that awful dream. I looked up, winked, and said, Okay, point taken.